Hi, so the moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and show you how this engine operates. To begin with, since the first video we showed you all the subsystems and components and design, we've added a couple of things that you'll notice that are important to get this thing operating. First of all, we have placed a high voltage spark generator to drive the spark plug to get the flame initiated. Once it's burning, this isn't necessary. It's just necessary to get everything started. In addition to that, you'll see a battery here that will drive a commercial three-stage vacuum blower. The clean air that's provided by this blower allows us to start the engine up as well as to be able to operate the engine or run the engine for a little while after the fuel's out of it just to make sure that everything is cooled off quickly. That's a lot more convenient than using, say, a leaf blower or something that may have debris in it. You don't want to get anything nasty into your engine. In addition to that, what we've done is Rather than using a uh, oil transfer pump, which can't generate the kind of pressures you need for operating the turbocharger, especially if you're going to go to two-stage where you need 60, 70, 80 PSI, we've actually opted to use an automotive fuel pump. Uh, it doesn't require you to uh, kludge together some sort of a engine-driven type of oil pump with motors and belts and pulleys. And as long as you stick with a very low viscosity oil, this operates very well and is very convenient because it's also 12 volt. In addition to that, you'll also notice that we've hooked up the propane to be able to operate this. And finally, even though this is plugged into a cord, 110 volts here, everything on this uh, system is 12 volts. We actually have a power supply in here that converts everything down. So you don't need 110 volt uh, power to operate this. Everything will operate with 12 volts if you place this on a vehicle. Now the first step in doing this is I'm going to be turning on the power supply and then I'll be turning on all of the motors, both the fans and the pumps. And once I begin the run up in the operation, it gets very loud. So I'm not going to be saying anything. So you can watch what I'm doing. I won't have to do a voiceover in this case because basically you're going to understand what goes on. First step is we're going to turn on the power supply to deliver power to the gauges. Exhaust gas temperature, boost pressure, oil pressure, and finally the oil temperature. We have not yet hooked up the photodiode or the hall sensor for the RPM, so that's why this one is off. We'll get to that in a, in a future video. Now when I turn on this, you're going to hear a fairly loud volume as everything turns on. There's a couple bubbles in the pump, so you hear a little bit of a gravelly sound, but that begins to disappear. You'll also notice the pressure is beginning to go up. And what I can do by adjusting the bypass is I can effectively control the pressure on the oil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack open the propane here at the primary and then I'll be controlling the throttle with the secondary here, the needle valve, for the fuel to go into the engine. When I turn on the blower that's going to be about the last you're going to hear from me so everything else is going to be visual. Here we go.
Now I'm going to let the oil pump and the water pump flow for a couple of minutes just to reduce any kind of uh, heat soak from the hot side of the turbine. But a couple things before we finish here is that in order to measure the thrust output of this engine, it's kind of problematic, especially when they get pretty powerful and somewhat extended, to place this on sort of a rolling table. So our first attempt to measure the pressure involved using a deflector plate that we put in front of the engine with a pressure gauge or a force gauge mounted on the back side. We found all this ended up doing is producing a lot of cooking of the operator because of all the reflected heat that came back off the engine. So I didn't like that method too much. We're going to do an improved method for measuring the thrust by using a deflector. Basically, we're going to place this deflector in the flow path from the engine like this and mount it on some linear bearings and we'll measure the downforce that's produced by the engine as it enters into the deflector. The advantage there is no matter how powerful the engine gets, the force will be down and we're not going to have to chain this thing down to the ground to keep it from tipping over when we uh, go to the more powerful engines. Finally, you might wonder why we started with such a tiny little turbine. Because the smaller the turbocharger, the more difficult it is to get, to get it to operate. The bearing resistances are pretty much the same no matter how big the turbocharger, so you have a bigger overhead in running a smaller turbocharger. In addition, the precision and the placement of the flame holes are very, very critical because you don't have a lot of time for the, the flame to burn through a small combustion chamber. The reason we did that is we have absolutely no intention of running this engine uh, as a thrust engine. This is solely to produce high pressure gas to drive a large free turbine to allow us to produce transmission or rotational output as well as to drive a generator. And we wanted the smallest unit possible to make it potentially useful for more applications than some enormous vehicle. So as we move on, we'll show you these additional modifications and the progression with uh, subsequent videos. But uh, this is very exciting and it's a lot of fun to come out here and just turn the thing on and annoy the neighbors and uh, wake up my wife. But in any case, I'm having a ball with this and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So I'll be seeing you soon. I really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. And for any of our uh, Patreon followers, I appreciate that because that has been uh, a real advantage to this channel ever since we did the last video on our 100,000 uh, subscribers. So you have a wonderful day and uh, enjoy the weather wherever you are. Hopefully it's not as apocalyptically cold where you are as where we are. But I'll wish you a good night. Take care.